Greg Wilson, Hempwood. <laughs> Here's square bales that come in. We get squares and rounds. These are actually old Sunstrand bales. Um, we've been buying up the inventory from the farmers that got stuck with it. We also do a few hundred acres every year ourselves. We buy a few hundred acres from people that plant, usually for the um, grain on the top. Yeah. And then there's a few hundred acres that come in that are like this, that somebody grew and didn't have another home for. Um, there's not too many people growing fiber or grain and fiber hemp in the U.S. It's coming. Everyone realizes that real hemp is supposed to be tall and you can get flour, you can get seed, and you can get fiber off of it, or stalk as we use. But it's taken a while for people to get over that mentality of growing a little Christmas tree, um, which the reality is if you wanted to get the intended results as a farmer, and I live on a little farm and everything, but I'm not grown up as a farmer, I've been a manufacturer and a builder. Um, you can't do something that needs the constraints of a greenhouse on hundreds of acres outside right. and expect it to turn out as planned. That's a big problem that CBD has is cannabis for people for THC has such a high value, they do it in a house. Then, for cannabis sativa L or what people use for um, doing CBD, that stuff needs to be grown in a greenhouse at least. So you don't have your cross pollination as much. You don't have as many of the effects as you get from just being sheer outdoors, where every year it's 25 or 50% of the crop doesn't turn out. Whether it went hot from some sort of outside reason or whether it just didn't work out because of drought or because of going too big or the soil not being right or and it's farming. Farming, the hardest part is the variables. So take those variables away as much as possible by putting them inside works. Now this stuff, some people call it George Washington hemp. Some people just call it industrial hemp or agricultural hemp. It's a road dump. And so it's planted at 50 pounds an acre and it gets about a million plants an acre come up and then you can get three to five tons of stalk off of it per acre. You take off the top for the flower and the seed, you can still, on a good crop, you can still pull three tons. Even if you get two tons, it's the icing on the cake for the farmer. Just like wheat straw. Top of the plant, you make your money. Bottom of the plant, you sell it for animal bedding, sell it for different building materials, things like that. And you can pull an extra, oh, two to five hundred dollars an acre off of something that wasn't gonna be used before. And it actually cost directly in that range to do it, not counting your labor, but just your seed and then putting it in the ground, fertilizing it, and then taking it out. You'll probably be in that $500 range ish. So you can actually almost get your money back by selling the byproduct. That's where hemp should, and I believe will go, is that if the top of the crop is worth two thirds, the bottom is worth one third. You better pull that one third back. So this stuff comes in here. We get thousands of tons every year. Go through about a ton an hour. Um, that's our capacity. Really right now we're running between 40 and 60% of capacity just depending on oh, weather is a huge factor. When it rains our dryers slow down. Um, the market during the winter time, the market being very, very slow, we ran through this past winter, but we always, instead of keeping the stable full of employees. As people leave in the fall, just like construction, you kind of slow down through the winter and then pick back up in the spring and summer yeah. when it's time to really get at it. Um, stuff comes through here and it gets crushed. This is our crushing machine. Um, most of the equipment here we had to invent or reconfigure. That back there is for round bales. When round bales come in, that thing pulls down. You can take a toilet paper unroller, it unrolls them straight through here. Anything that doesn't have machine paint on it or factory paint coating on it means that Charles, who's our machine manager, probably built it. <laughs> uh, this stuff comes down here. You can see what the fiber looks like. Yep. Comes down this way. It gets back down here. And so these wraps get thrown out on the table and they are then taken like this. Unroll it. Lay your hemp 
out on top. This has a scale on it. Okay. So you get a uniform weight every time. Comes down here. Get put into our glue. The glue that's empty because they're going to get a free week for their vacation. So comes here. Get put up on the rack. Here's their secret sauce. Don't film that. That's what keeps mold and insects out. Mix all our own glue. We go through a thousand gallons of glue a day. Um, it comes onto these racks back here, and obviously we've got automation equipped and things running through conveyors and all that. It's been a real, a lot of work. Um, here is dryer number two. This was an old rail car. We took the guts from five tobacco barns and put seventy-five thousand CFMs of air in it and then it's actually heated by our waste. So we're carbon negative as a company. Um, it takes anywhere from two to six hours depending on the weather to dry. Inside of that one we can fit 13 racks. Inside of this one here we can fit six racks, but these racks are a little bit bigger. This is dryer number one. This is the original one that actually worked. This is an old tobacco barn. So the carts get loaded in here or loaded in there. They come in the back, they go out the front. And then after they come out up here, they get unloaded and rolled out here and weighed in. So we weigh it again. You get 85 pounds of hemp that goes into each block. Um, we make six by six cans, this wooden can, six feet long. We go into this press right here. As you can see, all this stuff has computer systems and I mean, Siemens controls that are all, all hooked into a computer so you can control it and how it's working and how it's going. Um, it comes into here. This whole cavity opens up. You dump in 85 pounds of hemp, compresses it this way, and then this way, and then pushes it into the big press. So this thing here has 120, 40, 60, 70, 170 tons of pressure on this metric tons. And then that has 3,000 metric, oh sorry, 3,000 standard tons, 2,700 metric tons of pressure in it. That thing is enormous. That thing weighs 100 tons. Not counting the free press on it, we had a special design. Um, what you're looking at here is, this is what's making America's hemp plastic. We sell our sawdust to the hemp plastic guys. So you've got, this is sawdust. That real fine stuff over there is sand dust. They have two different mesh kinds. Once you come back here, the blocks come out of the back here, trains with them, put them into our trolley system. So these are baked. This runs off of our waste as well. So the heat in here actually goes through the plant in these pipes. Um, I'll show you some of the pipes in here. So these come back from our bio burner. And so that is all of our heating requirements in the building. Wow. We've got some of our panels back here. Um, these you got a wood fill in between them, but these are using, used for cabinetry. Yeah. So we do a lot of cabinets. I actually sold the cabinet out of our um, out of our office. We have a display cabinet. Been setting up retailers everywhere. I was in 
Louisville on Friday and Lexington on Saturday and then just came back yesterday. Here, this is our tool shop. There's a hanging swinging chair. A swinging chair. Pretty neat. Um, this is where we sharpen our own blades. That actually saved us $8,000 a month to sharpen our own saw blades. Hemp wood is that strong that it requires carbide. And in the States, people don't sharpen carbide saw blades. They usually just buy a new one. Not too many people use carbide saw blades in the US because there's not a whole lot of real heavy, right. hard materials. I mean, oak and hickory is about as far as you go. And people stay away from hickory because it's so hard. So we had to get our own sharpening set up, as you can see here. Each one of those blades costs two to 300 bucks if you're um, buying them off the market and we go through two blades a day. So you can see there's 400 to $600 a day going wow. out six days a week. So that was a big one. Using our um, waste to become our energy, that was a big one too. That was about a $4,000 a month swing. So that's uh -huh. the wood shop. We've got... Um, Oh, downtown, we can show you um, what we're doing with flooring there. When are you producing this? So, this is where we make our energy. So we grind up the hemp, goes into our bio burner, it dumps out biochar here, the smoke goes through a scrubber and pulls that carbon back out so it doesn't go back into the air. Uh, and then the char actually, we send it back out when people are picking up seeds they take in. Really, it's only enough for gardens. I put it in my garden. Everyone talks about doing a bunch of biochar that can be industrial size. It's a lot. Um, we also grind up a bunch of that stuff and sell it for animal bedding. This is what the hemp wood flooring looks like. And does that take a stain then too? Oh yeah. Yeah. This is stained right here. Oh right. So that is what we call bourbon. A little ode to our home of Kentucky. So that's what a hemp wood floor looks like right yeah, there. Right. Unfinished. 